A lovely viewer pointed me in the direction of a video that was posted this week on Book Angel's YouTube channel. It was Book interviewing the mother of an autistic child, in her words, a severely autistic child, and the title of the video was Are Trans Kids Appropriating Autism? The actual video is not just about trans people though, it's kind of just about young people on TikTok talking about autism in general, the youths running wild, self-diagnosing with everything under the sun, apparently. My son, like he hits himself, he hits us. That is autism. It's really, it's really hard to see that all of these kids are making a mockery. So we're gonna have a look at some of the misinformation in this video and unpack that today. Wearing Winnie the Pooh earrings, of course. Some of it's like so off the mark that, you know, hopefully, although sometimes it can feel quite hard to see things like this, hopefully it'll give you a little chuckle. You know, if you don't laugh, sometimes you will cry. So the only thing I knew about Book Angel before going into watching this video was that ContraPoints was cancelled about four years ago for asking Book to do like a 20 second voiceover. That's it, children. That's why mommy's cancelled. So Book Angel is an older guy. He's in his early 60s. He's quite a controversial figure within the trans community. You know, all the trans activists. He refers to himself as transsexual rather than transgender. In my understanding, people do this to kind of distinguish between transsexual people being people who want to pursue a medical transition, whether that's hormone surgery, and then transgender is sometimes seen as an umbrella term that will encompass people who might not want to medically transition. So say some non-binary people who don't want to medically transition. So by using this term transsexual, he's perhaps distancing himself from some people. And from some of the things he says within this video, it does seem like maybe he considers himself to be kind of more trans than some people. Transsexualism, mental disorder, is small. But in all fairness, the term transsexual was used at the time when he transitioned. But many people do dislike that term nowadays and it's offensive to use unless someone states that they identify that way. There is a lot in this video, it's an hour long, so I'm mainly going to focus on the things that were said about autism, but I may touch on a few other little bits and pieces as well as we go. Amber, the woman he's interviewing, I assume is just a member of his audience. She introduces herself as a woman who's seeking a hysterectomy and also the mother of an autistic child. She also mentions vaguely that she works in the medical field. I'm in the medical yeah. field because I'm in the medical field. Like I'm in the medical field and I'm in the medical That's field. Not. That's what's funny. Let's see what she has to say about autism. Let's get into the autism because this is great. You actually have an autistic child. So my son is a level three out of three. So there are three levels of support needs in the DSM-5 diagnostic criteria for autism that are sometimes used. I don't think I was given a level at the time of diagnosis, but I haven't read my report for a while because it makes me feel a bit weird. I feel like I've been perceived a bit too much <laughs> when I read that, you know? But I would have been given level one, which is requiring support, whereas level three is requiring very substantial support. So for example, Amber's son might need help with getting dressed throughout his whole life. Whereas for me, I might need some extra time in exams. But autistic people can have quite dramatic strengths and weaknesses. And the spectrum is just not as simple as being a straight line from like most to least autistic. We actually really struggle to measure autism severity, which is why we go by support needs instead. Autism is really complicated. There's still a lot we don't understand. It's not easy to just put it in these neat boxes. And I think that does cause some issues sometimes. I think people would love to be able to point to, you know, just one present presentation and be like, oh yeah, that's autism, but it, it is more complicated than that. Okay. When people say they need to gatekeep transgenderism, I feel the same way as gatekeeping the autism community. As you might be able to tell, she has some transphobic views as well. We'll get onto that a little bit later. People now are self-identifying as, and it makes it less valuable for therapists, psychologists, all of these things. I spoke about it before when I reacted to the fake disorder cringe subreddit, but I really don't understand how self-diagnosis makes the label autism less valuable for medical professionals, for people working in the medical field, shall we say. Like I'm in the medical field. If you're self-diagnosing, isn't kind of the whole point that you're not interacting with medical professionals 
Hence the self. If you weren't, that'd be a medical diagnosis, wouldn't it? You might turn up at your doctor's office and say, look, I think I might be autistic because of these reasons, but isn't that normal? Isn't that how it works? No one's gonna turn up at your door with a clipboard and say, oh, we have a feeling that you might be autistic. You're coming with us today. We're gonna get you diagnosed. If you suspect you have something that might be diagnosable and you want to get that thing diagnosed, it's on you, unless something's discovered in like a routine checkup or whatever, it's usually on you to recognize that, call your doctor's office and say, I need an appointment for this reason. And if somebody has enough reason to suspect that they might be autistic to make that phone call, I think you deserve to have a fair assessment. There are very recent studies to suggest that half of all autistic people in the UK are undiagnosed. Autism has long been viewed as a pediatric condition, meaning that many autistic adults missed out on a diagnosis as children when autism was little known. This study from April last year was published in the Lancet Regional Health Europe. They looked at a hell of a lot of data and they found that one in every 34 10 to 14 year olds were diagnosed, as opposed to one in 6,000 70 plus year olds. That is crazy. And they estimated that somewhere between 435,000 and over a million autistic adults in the UK are undiagnosed. So what's more likely in your mind that like thousands and thousands of people who are on the waiting list for a diagnosis now, they just joined some sort of autism cult online, they were brainwashed. Or is it just that people's understanding of everything is constantly evolving and now we have access to more information through the internet? I don't know, which one's more likely? So she then starts describing her 12 year old son. He's nonverbal, so he doesn't non speak at all. And he's 12 wow. and he's incontinent, so that means he still wears diapers. He's really generally like, what autism is, what autism can be. What autism can be. I think she was right on the second one there, not what autism is. I am not what autism is. You constantly hear people in online spaces, like the ones that they're both complaining about here in this video, you constantly hear people saying, if you've met one autistic person, you have met one autistic person. From her description, it seems like her son has a comorbid learning disability, we'd call it in the UK, you call it an intellectual disability in the US. According to the National Autistic Society in the UK, one third of autistic people also have a learning disability slash intellectual disability. The autism spectrum isn't linear and many people talk about the spiky profile. This means an autistic person could be a leading expert on nuclear physics, but unable to remember to brush their teeth or clean their clothes. Some autistic people will have high support needs, which may mean they require full-time care and support. Some people may need a bit of support with day-to-day -day activities, while others live fully independent lives. With the right support in place, all autistic people should be able to live the life they choose. Psh, mic drop. And so it's kind of all these kids on TikTok that have hijacked, oh, I stim, but I could do this on beat. Don't come at us for having good rhythm. That's not our fault. We can't help that. That's not stimming. My son, I could show you videos of my son. I'd really prefer it if she didn't show videos of him without informed consent, unless it was for medical reasons. It's an echoic stimming, so he'll scream, ah, or he'll flap because that's what his body is telling him to do. It's not something like, oh, I'm dancing, so I'm stimming. So stimming is short for self-stimulatory behaviors. Everybody does it. Like most people will click their pens and tap their foot. Most people enjoy going out dancing. Isn't dancing so weird? We're gonna move our bodies because it feels nice. And that's the thing with stimming. We do it because it feels nice. Autistic people may stim more obviously, more frequently, and there are certain stims that are more associated with autistic people, such as hand flapping and rocking. She says echoic stimming here. I think she means echolalia, where autistic people might repeat something that they've heard said, maybe repeat it over and over just because they like the sound of it. And vocal stimming is one as well. She mentions that his son screams. I feel like there is a bit of a misconception that only higher support needs autistic people stim and particularly in these very stereotypical autistic ways. But anyone who watches my channel will know that I flapped my hands as a child. I have a lot of home video footage of it from when I was two years old. It was well before Tim. TikTok. I didn't know how on trend I would be, apparently. And it's really dangerous to have, wow. I don't know if you've seen the influx of people with Tourette's, kids with Tourette's on TikTok, and that's what the social contagion has become. I really dislike it when people think it's their place to decide who does or does not have a certain condition, particularly when it's based off a 
30 second TikTok based off anything really because if you think that somebody is self-diagnosed and that's not appropriate then why is it appropriate for you to like come in and peer undiagnose them? Why are you qualified to do that? Is it because you work in the medical field? And I'm in the medical yes, field, that's what's funny. But I get told in my comments constantly by autistic people but there are people out there who really do fake. So I decided to do a little bit of digging and I searched around for like people faking to and what I did find was a lot of people going back and forth on Reddit. It was like a TikTok gossip subreddit about whether one particular individual was faking their tics or not. I won't say who it was because I find this offensive, but nobody could really reach a consensus. It was like, well, I think they're exaggerating. No, my friend does it like that. I think it's legit. And then somebody was like, oh, I saw them in person. I sat near them and they didn't tick at all. So I think they're faking it which is extremely creepy, can we agree? I also found a faking Tourette's compilation with like 2.4 million views on YouTube. Most of the things in the video were completely random and irrelevant, but one of the clips I sat there and I was like, hmm, well, I do think that looks like the ticks that I've seen when I've watched other people on TikTok. And then I was like, what am I doing here? This is highly inappropriate. Why am I sat here analyzing somebody's ticks to see if I think they're real or not? I'm not a medical professional. I don't have Tourette's. What? <laughs> so I was like, yeah, let's not do this. And I wish other people would stop doing this too. So my friend is, she's a doctor in education. She was saying that she's witnessed so many like older kids do this because they're getting the accolades. And that's- That's right. Okay, getting the accolades. She says kids here and I'm 27. So I'm assuming she's not talking about me. Basically all of the influences I've reacted to in the TikTok reaction videos I make on this channel have any of them been under 20 years old? The only content of autistic kids I see on Instagram and TikTok is from parents who've recorded their children stimming or having meltdowns and uploaded it without their consent. What I think kids with autism, why it's such on a rise is because you are going with what is in style. In style. Okay, again, if something has been underdiagnosed, we will have to play catch up at some point. And you can see from how the ratio has changed over time, how many autistic boys we thought there were for number of autistic girls. It keeps changing. The gap keeps closing. And there are also heaps of undiagnosed autistic men. So that means there's even more autistic women and gender non-conforming folks as well. There's just, there's a lot of folks that have gone undiagnosed, okay? Have people who say these kind of things have they ever thought that maybe this content is really taking off online? You know, content about being trans, content about having tics and Tourette's, contents about being autistic. Is it maybe taking off online because it really resonates with a lot of people? A lot of people who previously would have had to suffer in silence, would have had to feel like they were the only one to ever feel that way. Because like my son is taught all of his social norms. He's in over 30 hours a week of therapy plus 40 hours of school in a specialized school. And these people who are like, oh, I'm neurodivergent. I mean, all autistic people do struggle with social norms. That's right there in the diagnostic criteria. But as I've said already, not everybody struggles to the same extent. Me saying that I'm autistic, which I am, I'm diagnosed autistic, that doesn't mean I'm equating my experience to every other autistic person. Putting an umbrella over all of these things really has sickened me. Like the DSM-5 changed. And so now Asperger's is a part of ASD, which it should have never been. Nope. I like, totally agree with you. Diagnostic criteria and our understanding of conditions changes over time. In the not too distant past, they used to think autism was just bad parenting. I mean, some people still kind of do, but people who are actually experts used to believe that. And they would have blamed Amber for his son's struggles, which is just absolutely ridiculous, obviously. Back in 2013, the DSM-5 came out, it dropped, and a bunch of different labels, including Asperger's, were smoosh together to create autism spectrum disorder or condition. The reason for this change was because all of these conditions were too similar basically. Apparently they found no consistent biological features to distinguish Asperger's from autism. Some people act like the switch over to ASD that it now kind of has watered it down a bit, maybe now it describes too many people, but there really isn't all that much difference in the core traits it describes. It's just smooshed together. To me it makes sense because I have no idea 
idea what I would have been diagnosed with prior to 2013. Probably Asperger's, but also could have possibly been pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified, sometimes known as atypical autism, maybe? I don't know. Probably would have just depended on the medical professional who was present on the day, which shows it wasn't super reliable, maybe. The DSM-5 does still separate people like me from her 12-year-old son. In the criteria, you must specify if the autism diagnosis is with or without accompanying intellectual impairment and with or without accompanying language impairment. Like there's so many kids with Asperger's who are just a little bit socially awkward. I'm socially yeah. awkward. I don't know how to, yeah. you know, I'm really, right, exactly, everybody. Yeah, a lot of people are socially awkward, but being socially awkward doesn't make you autistic and the DSM-5 doesn't say that it makes you autistic. But also deficits in developing, maintaining and understanding relationships. It doesn't sound not socially awkward. But if she really feels like she's that socially awkward, if it's causing her a lot of anxiety and she has an autistic son, she might want to look into the fact that she might be autistic. Or not, she doesn't have to, she has free will. No one's going to turn up at her door with a clipboard. I have no idea whether she's autistic or not. I can't tell because you can't tell by looking at somebody. Like Everybody. my husband would be considered on the autism spectrum if he was going by today's standards. Well, we know autism is genetic and if you have an autistic son then it's not necessarily all that surprising. Lots of people do find out that they are autistic because of their children. If he would be diagnosed by today's standards, chances are he would have been diagnosed with something like Asperger's maybe on the DSM-4 as well if he had been assessed. Because yeah. he has OCD and he stims yeah. sometimes. OCD is pretty common for autistic people for sure. I had a very obsessive hand washing base <laughs> when I was a child. What's stem? So stimming is stimming. like my son flaps, but it's like a rigid flap. So it's kind of, I would describe it more as a seizure where it's uncontrolled. So I already explained what stimming is. It is not a seizure. Autistic people are more likely to experience seizures. I have epilepsy in my family and absence seizures. So maybe her son does experience seizures. I don't know. But that's a completely different thing. Stimming is a repetitive behavior that an autistic person does in order to self-soothe. It can even be like sloshing water around in the sink and watching it move. It can involve any of your senses. I can definitely choose to stim and I suppress stims as a survival response. For sure, autistic people who don't mask and autistic people who are higher support needs, may be unable to stop themselves even when a stim is harmful or is causing negative outcomes for them, but it's not a seizure, it's a normal autistic behaviour. Now you see on TikTok all these people are like, oh I'm stimming, this is a stim. I felt like I was on some sort of video call with a boomer for a second then, I was video calling my, my family abroad. <laughs> Again, here's some clips of me stimming in the late 1990s, way before TikTok, in a very similar manner to individuals on TikTok. And it's not a stim. This isn't a stim. And now we're full on mocking people. Ironically, you've managed to look just like the very small number of people who do mock autistic people online and pretend to do stims in order to bully autistic people. So I don't know, well done, I guess. And right. so there was these hysterics in like the 2012s when I was working in the ED that all these girls, it, and it was weird that it was predominantly girls. Is that a little bit of casual misogyny there? I don't know. Would come up with tics, saying that they had Tourette's. Wow. But that's when all of this Tourette syndrome started coming out on TikTok, on social media. And it is it is conformity. So a couple of weeks ago in another video that I did, we were told that we wanted to be autistic to be special, but now we want to be autistic because we want to conform. I see. I'm sure Amber knows better than anyone that being autistic is not synonymous with being accepted by the people around you with conformity. Yes, there are lovely online communities, but again, why do you think this information resonates so much with people? And why do we feel the need to turn to an online space? It's so sad is what it is. Do you think these kids have some form of autism that are doing this? In, I don't... In, 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 yeah. I'm a... I'm going to be real honest and really Please, that's mean. what I'm no, going to me. gatekeep autism where I don't yeah. think if you're yeah. awkward or if you think yeah. different or if you can't be in a social room that you have autism. So you're saying that you think autism is an intellectual disability then? So did Asperger's ever exist? I don't know. I don't know how you feel, but I don't think somebody should take their 
one experience with their own child and project that onto everybody and the whole world. My son is 12 years old. He still wears diapers. My son does not speak. My son cannot feed himself. My son does not know time. My son does not know weather. My son elopes. He hits himself. He hits us. That is autism. But it just isn't. I mean, it can be. It can be some people's presentation of autism, but none of those things listed are on the diagnostic criteria. I also think it's important to point out that many, if not most, level one autistic people will experience autistic meltdowns. Some autistic influencers are brave enough to post content of their meltdowns online. Hitting yourself and self-harming in a meltdown state is not exclusive to autistic people who are higher support needs at all. I don't want to undermine her son's struggles at all, but I do wish that she wouldn't undermine other autistic people's struggles. Autistic people who are high masking, who do have the ability to mask, are probably less likely to show these low moments online because they're embarrassing. As autistic advocate Paige Leal explains in this TikTok. Autism characteristics are really pointed out and most obvious when someone is at their lowest point. Fun fact, I don't really show you guys what I'm like at my lowest point because that's embarrassing. I'm an adult. I have a job. I have clients. I don't believe yeah. that autism should ever been umbrella and I'm going to get to a little bit. I am because... too, actually. <laughs> I am. It's, I'm because sorry. It's really, it's really hard to see that all of these kids are making a mockery of what my son, my son, like when I die, nobody is going to be there. When I die, nobody's going to be there for my son. And I've had to fight so hard. Like, a principal locked my son in a closet for 20 minutes. He physically locked and after he hit him, it's all on video. That is absolutely hideous and she is obviously in a lot of pain here. It must be so hard to have a child who you love so much and to feel like there's just such a lack of understanding and acceptance and there is such a lack of understanding and acceptance with autism, 100%. Here in the UK, I'm constantly seeing news articles popping up from parents of autistic children who are so desperate. Sometimes their children have been locked away in inpatient facilities and they're desperately trying to get them back and to get community supports in place and they're just kind of living in limbo. There are so many parents, particularly mothers, who just can't go back to work because they can't find suitable school placements for their autistic children. It's incredibly sad and frustrating. The resources are often just not there. But that isn't the fault of any lower support needs autistic people. And many autistic people do work with autistic children or do support work with autistic adults, things like that. I just don't think that lower support needs autistic people and mums of autistic children need to be at war really. I think we kind of want the same things and it would be nice to be on the same side. And these kids were like, oh I'm neurodivergent because it's cool, it's not right. I have a whole video about how autism is not cool and trendy that I posted recently. A lot of young people are using the word autistic as a slur now, as a replacement for the R word. A TikTok bubble, a TikTok community, a TikTok hashtag is not necessarily a reflection of wider society. But also, do we not want autism acceptance? Does it have to be all gloom and pain and meltdowns all of the time? We can also have fun and make a joke sometimes. And I've seen this with Book Angel over on his Instagram he'll often react to content from trans people and they'll be like kind of making jokes and stuff and he'll say they're making a mockery of being trans but it's not supposed to be serious they're having fun painful things can be really funny sometimes particularly when you're talking to a community who can relate and who could laugh with you it can be a really helpful coping mechanism to laugh and it feels like maybe that's what's going on here with amber and the autism content that she's seen on tiktok maybe maybe she isn't always getting that it's supposed to be a bit of a joke a bit tongue-in-cheek. But we're also allowed to not hate ourselves all of the time, you know? We're allowed to like ourselves and to like the fact that we're autistic. No, it's okay. It, it actually, it, you know, the emotions are important for me and it's why I, I cry with you because I feel for you because it's it's not easy what you're having to deal with, but you're such a loving, beautiful mother. I can tell. I, I just met you, but I can tell. And to struggle with what you have to struggle with and then to see these people making sort of mockery, choosing to have autism is so 
on, on so many levels so wrong and so disrespectful and so just ugly and nasty. How do you know these people are choosing to have autism? A large number of the autistic people on the TikTok, if not most of them, will be officially diagnosed. But Angel says similar things about trans people elsewhere in the video, like I'm sure there are some people who are really trans. One out of maybe a hundred of these kids might be actually trans. But now we're just doing every kid and taking every kid's breasts off who say, I want my breasts removed. And it's going to be the biggest medical scandal ever. Where are you getting that information from, that one in 100? We know that things change over time. I've mentioned before when, you know, it wasn't seen as socially acceptable to be left-handed. There weren't that many left-handed people. When it became okay, it was like, whoop, all these left-handed people started coming out of the woodwork, you know? There's a lot more visibility for trans people now and for autistic people, which means more people can hear about other people's experiences and go, oh, that sounds an awful lot like my experience, people are able to find themselves now much sooner. It's great that things are improving for people. But there's a little bit of an air from Buck of like, I had to suffer, so you have to suffer too. This is not easy. I want to tell these kids this is not easy. I might make it look right. easy. I do appreciate that both of them have been through a lot and things that I will never understand. But does that make me and other level one and level two autistic people, does that make us undeserving of any support? It's um, like the same as if somebody was like, oh, I have Down syndrome. It's different because you can't see that physical. That's right. That physical, um, description of Down syndrome and so everybody could claim this. I could say exactly the same thing. You can't see it. You can't see being autistic or being trans. So why do you think you have a right to accuse certain people of faking it? But as a side note, people with Down syndrome do present very differently to each other. As far as I'm aware, everybody who has Down syndrome will have some amount of learning disability or intellectual disability, but some people will be able to live independently and some won't. Like autism, it varies. And if you weren't able to see these visible differences in facial features. Would people with Down syndrome be told they were faking like autism? Maybe. Right. All it is is like the socialness of having a disorder and it's like it's not cool. What's not cool is that being an autistic person who masks, who compensates and also having unmet support needs, both of those things are risk factors to an autistic person's life. Having an intellectual disability is not the only challenge that can affect an autistic person. I made a video recently on the dangers of autistic masking, which I'll leave linked down below. It also makes me so mad, Amber, that these kids are getting away with this stuff and nobody's pushing back on them and like, we're the fucking adults. Here, yeah, here I am. I'm an adult. I'm 27. I feel like I've been lumped into this somehow. <laughs> One of my favorite advocates, Chloe Hayden, was diagnosed when she was 13. She's mid-20s, 26, 27 now. Paige Liel, another TikTok advocate diagnosed in her teens. She's in her 20s now. A lot of who they are calling kids on TikTok on the internet are in fact adults. But all of us, me, Chloe, Paige, we all get comments all the time telling us that we're faking being autistic. Chloe has now decided to take herself away from social media, take a step back, someone else is running it for her because her comments got so bad she posted a video of herself stimming because she saw a part of Wales and the comments were horrible. People were making response TikToks to it. It wasn't nice. TikTok is not just like this warm, fuzzy place for autistic people. And Never. these kids could write on the internet, TikTok, and do all this stuff. My son doesn't right. understand the use of a computer. My son doesn't understand this. It's just sad that self ID yeah. has got us to this point. You could say whatever the hell you want and you get to be treated as you want. No, my yes. son's diagnosis took 11 hours. So I'm not sure what her point is here with bringing up the 11 hours. I'm assuming it's because people can self diagnose on the internet, she's saying, and they can do that very quickly. Whereas for her, it took a long time to get the diagnosis for his son. I mean, again, many if not most, I don't know, I'm not rude enough to go and ask everyone online to show me their medical record, but many if not most of these autistic advocates will be officially diagnosed. I don't know, is the implication that the DSM-5 diagnosis is invalid? We shouldn't be listening to those diagnoses anymore. But anyway, people self-diagnose often because the wait lists are ridiculously long. And unfortunately, as a lot of people were missed as children, they've had to wait like half their lives to get a diagnosis. We've been on a waiting list for one of his ABA therapies because what? all these other kids who just ID as it, they uh, haven't even had an actual diagnosis, are uh, getting it first. That, okay. 
There you go. Everybody, did you just hear that? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, I did just hear that. So I feel like this shows how little time and energy Amber has spent in the autistic community, particularly the TikTok community that she's criticizing. ABA therapy is extremely controversial in those circles. If you search ABA therapy, you'll see lots of people debating about it. You know, not everybody's against it, but a lot, if not most, autistic advocates on TikTok are. ABA therapy is also recommended usually for autistic children between the ages of two to six, so I don't think that autistic advocates on TikTok, who as I say, probably most of them are like late teens to 30, I don't think they're taking ABA therapy away from Amber's son. If resources and support is lacking in your area, it shouldn't be that way, and I'm sorry for that, but that isn't the fault of other autistic people. That isn't where the blame should be placed. That's not productive. We can't do anything about that. Also, who is getting accommodations with a self-diagnosis? I think people grossly misunderstand self-diagnosis. There are countless TikToks discussing the fact that when people get an official diagnosis, they don't get anything. They just get the diagnosis, they're like, oh, you're autistic, well done. And there's not really any post-diagnosis support whatsoever, they just wave you on your way. If an official diagnosis as a lower support needs autistic person doesn't get you much, then a self-diagnosis is most certainly not gonna get you anything. Self-diagnosis basically means self-understanding. I mean, your husband, who you think could potentially be an undiagnosed autistic person, he doesn't have a diagnosis. Not everybody wants to pursue a diagnosis, and that's fine. It's expensive, it's there on your medical record forever, or Autism is still something that's stigmatized, it is not trendy, and also there are crazy waiting times, as I've already mentioned. A self-diagnosis may help you to find a community, it may help the people closest to you understand you more, and it may help you to be kinder to yourself and allow you to forgive yourself for certain things that happened in your past. But it's not gonna get you disability benefits, it's not gonna get you ABA therapy. You can't even get extra time in exams without proof of diagnosis, in my experience. Lay that also over top of trans, okay? There are kids out there who are using the trans space, getting top surgery, getting hormones, getting, and then detransitioning, that could have been given to an actual real trans right. person. Now trans people are waiting in line for years to get what they need because people who don't really need it are being put ahead of the people who actually need it. This is why self-ID is a fucking dangerous. Again, I hate this whole people who are really trans thing. Who gets to decide? Who gets to make that decision? The only way somebody gets diagnosed with gender dysphoria and starts a medical transition, if that is what they wish to pursue, is through them making that appointment themselves. Again, no one's coming around with a clipboard to find the true trans people. But self-diagnosed people are getting top surgery? Again, this is really confusing. Contrary to what people say in the UK, and I imagine it's not too dissimilar anywhere else, you have to jump through so many hoops to get medical treatment for gender dysphoria. It's not easy. Wait times for trans people seeking gender affirming care in this country are even worse than the wait times for autism. It's scary how long it is. And then kids are self-IDing with what her actual child and she sees every day. Can you imagine how fucking, that's me and you are in the same space, Amber. Amber, it makes me very mad when I see this the same way it makes you because I'm like, what? I struggled. You can't just go on TikTok and say I'm trans and then next thing you're trans. I mean, yeah, you can wake up and socially transition whenever you want. We all have free will about how we present ourselves to the world for sure. But medically transitioning is still not an easy path. I'm sure it's so much easier than it was back in Buck's day. But I mean, that's a good thing, isn't it? As I say, certainly not quick not easy. Everybody yeah. thinks that there's something and it's cool to be something ADHD, anxiety, everybody has anxiety who doesn't have anxiety. That's the one thing that kills me now is everybody has to have something in order to fit in because conformity. There it is again, conformity. We can't win. We were told that we were trying to be special. Now we're trying to conform. We can't do anything right. <laughs> There's a lot more interesting things going on here in this conversation. At one point they say all surgeons are psychopaths. There's been a lot of studies saying that surgeons are psychopaths. Because who oh, they are. are. And narcissists. You can literally, oh, yeah. especially, especially surgeons or people who have a specialty, right? They are such insane narcissists. You can just feel it. But why do we put so much trust in doctors? They're practicing medicine. People they make a really big deal at one point that Amber has this 
book from 2012. You have gold. That lists side effects of a particular hormone blocker. This is a drug that's often given for endometriosis as well, which is a condition that I have. And he repeatedly asks her for photographs of one particular section about the side effects, as if it's like some big conspiracy that's hidden away in this book from 2012. Mind you, this is a 2012 edition, so. I don't care. I don't, that even makes it more, that even makes it more powerful to me. Because since 2012, they've known this this is shit. You've got to send me a picture of that, Amber. Oh, I, I, I need that. It. That is like so powerful. But it's like that information is readily available on the internet. You know what I would love if you could do? If you could take photos of that and send them to me. There's a lot of fear mongering going on here and a lot of twisting and manipulating of the truth. But I mean, we really shouldn't be taking medical advice from people who refer to contraindications as contradictions about four times. Contradictions and side effects and all of the contradictions were and so yeah. there's so many the contradictions and I was like I'm not going to use them off label because it doesn't That's show right. the the contradictions of it. So as autism is so underdiagnosed, if you are considering that you might be autistic, you might enjoy this video I made on nine signs that you're not autistic. I also have this video where I reacted to a couple of guys on TikTok who kind of think that everybody wants to be autistic but for the opposite reasons to what Amber gave here. If you would like to support the channel you can do so over on Patreon, don't feel any pressure to though whatsoever. If you do join the lowest tier is four US dollars a month and you get two exclusive videos every month. There's one on there discussing Autism Speaks and whether they're okay now. There's also one where I watched a mini documentary and reacted to it about a school just for autistic girls. It made me cry, but it was quite a nice watch. And also when you join the Patreon, you get to join the Discord community as well called the Antisocial Club. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye.